Now more than ever, we are advocating for younger people to participate in politics. At the just concluded elections, we saw more young people going for House of Representatives and the Senate. More and more of these people are expected to come out in the coming years. Now, joining us today on the show, we have the founder of YIP Africa. YIP stands for Youth in Politics. His name is Markelvin Jude Ose, and he's a community development advocates thank you so much for joining thank us thank you so much welcome thank you. i think the work that you're doing is really important <laughs> because before you know in, in the past years we saw that there were a lot of there was a huge disconnect young people were not as informed about politics it was maybe maybe a little too complicated maybe uninteresting when i was starting to see um, a lot of participation from your perspective how would you say we fed in the last elections were you impressed by the number of young people that came out um, first things first, I would like to acknowledge the fact that, and probably make a shout out to Samson Itodo. Samson Itodo is one of those. He is the one who pioneered the Not Too Young to Run campaign, through, Not Too Young to Run Bill, Bill yes. through his um, um, initiative called Yaga Africa. And thank you so much for what you've done, Thompson. <laughs> I have to acknowledge that. Because, and the Future Awards Africa 2018 Young Person yeah, of the Year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so moving forward to your question, um, we were so glad that what he did was approved and the president assented to it, right? And then the number of young people who were ready, aside from being just young, we have a lot of people who are competent, young people who came out the way a lot. Mm. I mean, one of those you have, um, what's this guy's name? Um, um, Badego Vivo, one of Rose, the young yes. guys, yes. Um, Senator who yes. ran as well. Lagos West. Lagos West. Even though we didn't, what, what happened or post outcome of the election did not really favor a lot of young people, but the fact that we have them there, now the world is seeing that Nigeria literally have young people who are competent enough to, to, to run for office and also who can literally work for the government. Mm. So yeah, I, I think I'm impressed with, with the number of outcomes of, of young people, yeah. Okay, so aside those who actually came out to say, okay, yes, I want to run for this position, I feel I would do better in this position. What about those who were encouraged to vote and still had the fears that they had and they still didn't show up even after getting their PVCs. Ha, there is a lot of um, there's a lot about that because the truth is voters' apathy is still very high, and Nigeria still need a lot more to do when it comes to encouraging people to vote. First things first, um, like for 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 if we follow the trend during the election. An 18-year-old boy was killed in Kogi State, right? He's just 18. It's probably his first election, right? Now, what was the voters, votes, voting education that was given the entire process? Mm. But then again, moving forward, Nigeria hasn't gotten to the point whereby people are voting because of issues, right? Which is why they ask, okay, so why am I voting? We need to ensure that young people are given the education as to why they should vote. And that will literally triple and increase the voting participation. If you look at the numbers, literally, you see that it dropped. I mean, with the number of people who collected their votes, it was, it was a lot. And young people constituted 51.11% of that. Mm. But then again, the turnout was low. Yes, a lot of people were, were scared. The fact that they don't know of the uncertainty, they don't know what's going to happen. Security, all of Security that. Security and all of that. And but rightfully so, right? Well, yeah. Rightfully so. We saw that. We saw that. You know, it's like saying, but I told you so. Mm. After I was right. But then again, we, we now need to find a way to either review the electoral process to ensure some, some form of review that ensures that young people really participate more in the in, 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 in voting process. When we were younger, we were told that we were the leaders of tomorrow. Tomorrow has come, <laughs> and we're still we're the still leaders of, the tomorrow, of tomorrow. Mm. And we still have the people who were leading us when we were little, <laughs> still in power. What is it that makes it so difficult for those who are our, you know, the, our heroes? They're supposed to be our heroes past, but they're still holding on to power. What is it that makes it difficult for the older ones to step out and allow competent younger people to take power? Um, <laughs> like everywhere in the world, we still practice a gerontocratic system of government, right? Whereby it's a system of government of the old people. 
they just feel that because you are, you are young, you don't understand the issues of governance. But because you are old, you understand the issues of governance, right? And is that true? It's not true. I'm, look at what has happened in the past couple of months mm -hmm. with, with, the, with the whole um, outcome of not too young to run and what has happened in Nigeria. For example, let's go to Africa, you know, in a larger scope. Look at Rwanda. The minister for, for ICT is a young lady. Guess what they've done just recently by launching a, a, a satellite that provides internet to young people who don't really have access to internet in rural areas. And what they've done is to make it sustainable so that Rwanda begins to tap into the space um, technology, tap into internet of things, tap into a lot more within the value chain, Okay. right? So mm. young people are pioneering that change. So until our leaders begin to run a government of inclusion and decide to tap from the strength of young people, because look, look at it, the future is here. We're no longer the future of tomorrow. The future is now. And we young people are more flexible and dynamic. We, we, we run on innovation. And nations need that energy. They should be tapping from it, not going against it, as opposed to oh, either we, we are, they see us as though we are not competent or we are, they see us as a threat. Okay, so um, you've mentioned um, the older ones seeing us as a threat or feeling that we're not competent. But in truth, get 10 youths right now in a room and ask all 10 of them, if you were president today, what would you do? Because I've actually been in a room where I was asked that with nine other people. And sorry to say, about seven out of them said one thing, leading just summarization. Um, they said that they are going to loot their share <laughs> or sell the country. No, I'm sorry, I'm being truthful right now. And we noticed that even including the educated young Nigerians. Now, do you feel that the older generation doesn't really have reason to be scared of actually handing power to these people? Um, hmm. two things. First things first, in a room of 10 young people, you're bringing up a question like that, we have to be careful about who are these young people. Mm. All right? If it's a room of people who do not really understand what governance is, the responses you get will be disappointing. But if it's a room of people, young people who are grounded when it comes to governance, and you'll be shocked, 25 year olds are very grounded, right? Mm -hmm. And it would amaze you the responses you get. So I've engaged some young people, and the responses, either for those who are interested in legislation, who are interested, uh, or, 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 you know, maybe being president, mm -hmm. number one office in the land, their responses will shock you. It's logical, it's simple, it's more like the standard for anybody who wants to be in governance, right? So I feel that we just need to pay more attention to a group of young people like that and encourage them to come okay. into the space and just grow through the ranks. I mean, it's important for, for you know, it, there's a difference to know that a pool of young leaders exist, mm. and, a dif and, and a difference bringing them into a space and make them participate in the entire process of governance. Mm. You see it changes. Okay. Now let's, let's look at the role of ho town hall meetings. When we look at you know, the politics and we look at youth participation, how important are town hall meetings? How do we get them to attend town hall meetings? <laughs> I always say this. Um, Nigeria as as taking politics to be more like every four year festival. <laughs> it's sad, but that's what it is. Town hall meetings. It only exists when a political, a candidate is seeking for elections. But post elections, you're supposed to keep having town hall meetings. Because as a representative, for example, you are meant to represent a constituency. Now, if your constituency do not get information from you, or you don't get information from them, you cannot be effective representing their interest while you're in the house. 
Hence, town hall meetings. So you keep, you must, it's important, it's very, very important for young people to, I can't say encourage young people to go for town hall meetings because these town hall meetings are, are touching politics. These town hall meetings are, literally comes up every four years. It's like a festival, right? Mm -hmm. But the narrative need to change, which is why if you go to different local governments, like right now, or different constituency now, the reason why they've remained the way they've been past eight years, past 12 years, is because they've ruled out post-town hall meetings. More like the connection between their rep and the people is closed. There's a break in communication. There's a break there. in communication. Okay. And at the time, town hall meetings ensures that that happens. Now, they, say, they tell you um, politics is local or bring it home. But then again, they put it there. You're representing the people. And then you just shut the door. Mm. You get? So the only way you can be more effective doing your work as mm. a representative is to ensure you keep communicating with your people, hence town hall. Now, there are many young people also mm. that run for office this year that did not get through. Some didn't get through primaries. Some got beyond the primaries, but did not win the seats that they were contesting for. And I think now more than ever, we should emphasize the importance of town hall meetings, understanding that, okay, you didn't win now, but actually you've made yourself, you've announced your presence, so you need to keep communicating, you need to keep making yourself available. Right. So how would you say that we should, what, are the, what, what is the way to go for young people henceforth? Now that we've, we've concluded the presidential elections, of course, we're not done with the gubernatorial elections. But what is the way to go forward from here? And how can people, young people who are interested in politics be a part of the organization? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> first things first, if you're interested in leadership, because a lot of people see politics as either dirty or a means of livelihood, mm. is actually service so in rendering service to your people that you represent you have to go through a process that's the politics okay now um it's important moving forward from now to 2023 if you are going to be in any form run for office now is the time to start the, doing the work mm. for example you need to be able to win over within your locality, in fact, your street, win over their mandate. It could be helping, you know, even as, as simple as greeting the oldest person, you know, like greetings, you know, and being relevant, for example, ensure that you, 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 are, you are not found within a certain group of people who are t tagged waywards, Ensure you participate in some form of progressiveness. Ensure that you join some form of um, maybe um, your street meeting, your your residence in fact residence association. Mm -hmm. I even want I wanted to say residence association that as well. And participate. Ensure you take on leadership roles because from there you begin to learn within that circle the politics mm -hmm. that goes on and begin to win their mandate. And of course, it's after time, it, it, takes, it takes grace and a lot of courage to even win your, your constituency, right? Because it takes a lot of time to build that favor. Of course, favor. there is mm -hmm. definitely a lot that goes on behind the scenes. <laughs> According to Chude Gideon, well, love does not... Is it Chude that wrote that book, Love Does Not Win Elections? I'm not quite sure. I, I'll confirm. <laughs> but yes, indeed, love doesn't win elections. There are pro procedures and processes. And it's important that we get ourselves involved in the procedures and the processes. Do not be like the leap year that comes once in every four years. Participate in politics even now. now. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for coming. To enjoy more of this, our Ubunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.